Casper. The uh, next speaker is uh, Adrian Rosseel from Belgium. He has a uh, Master of Law, as almost everybody here seems sometimes, Master of European Law as well. He works at the Crossroads Bank, uh, which is the, the Belgian name for, in fact, the, their business register, which is a part of the Ministry of Economy. And Adrian is also a member of the Belgian Federal Appeal Commission for the reuse of government documents. And he'll certainly also speak about open data in Belgium, I know. Adrian, please. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to thank the organization uh, for having us here. So um, what's the sub subject of my presentation this afternoon? Um, I'm going to talk about how we distribute our data here uh, in Belgium, and more specifically about uh, open data. So um, first of all, who we are, the Belgium uh, Enterprise Register. We have uh, three official languages, so also three official names. You can see all three of them. Um, why were we founded or created? Uh, about uh, 10 years ago, and government, the government administration was very complex. Uh, this meant that companies uh, had to go to different uh, administrations to uh, register the company. They had many um, identification numbers. It was very complex uh, for the company. Therefore, to uh, simplify the life of companies, uh, they created uh, our database. Uh, and it's also used as an authentic source. Um, what we did was uh, give each company one unique identifier, and this identifier can be used um, in all communication uh, the company does uh, with the government, but also with uh, his customers or um, other uh, partners. Um, our register uh, contains official company information, and um, the way we, the data is uh, presented in our uh, database is also verified because we um, make sure that other administrations have access and they uh, verify uh, the information that they uh, register before they do so. Um, the content of our database, we have about uh, 1.5 uh, million active enterprises uh, registered. Um, what do I mean when I talk about uh, an enterprise? Um, not only legal persons, so um, this includes uh, commercial companies, um, foundations, associations, and so on. But we also have the sole traders, uh, foreign companies who need to uh, register, and uh, also government agencies are um, part of our database. Um, we have two kind of levels. We have the companies, the enterprises, but below, the level below, we have what we call establishment units. Um, those are the places or the, the exact addresses where the company actually exercises its activities. For example, the shops, the bureaus, uh, branches, factories, where the actual activities are done. Um, the what, what kind of information do we have? We have general information, like, like in most uh, other registers, I guess. Um, legal name, register seat, uh, legal situation, um, the legal functions. I mean, that's, uh, I mean the, the people who are able to represent the company, um, the activities, also the authorizations that the company has received or, or uh, owns, uh, and much more. Financial information. Um, what's, okay. So um, our database is actually uh, also a, a driver for more uh, government efficiency. Um, it is used to simplify um, procedures. For example, uh, if you want an authorization, you can now uh, demand it through our um, online, through a web interface. You don't have to go to a certain administration and uh, file a paper document. You can also track um, your application. Um, our database is also used as a source for statistics and analysis. Uh, one of our main uh, functions or roles is actually the crossroad function. This means that uh, we uh, put our information and data 
uh, at the disposal of, of all the other uh, government agencies so they can so they can have access and reuse uh, our information and integrate it in their own databases or applications. We also provide links towards other uh, government databases. For example, uh, the National Bank, where you can uh, find the annual accounts, and also the Belgian Official Gazette, where you can find all notifications of the statutes, memoranda, etc. cetera. Um, also, something that's really important is that our uh, database is also used as a um, user and access um, management uh, type of thing because uh, uh, we wow. register everybody that has a legal function um, in a company. This allows uh, other government agencies to build on that, on that information. So for example, if a company has new employees, uh, it has to uh, declare uh, those new workers um, at the social uh, security uh, agency. So what they can do is online, they can just uh, log in, uh, use an EID or another uh, kind of a token. Uh, and uh, the, for example, the director or the manager of the company can uh, online uh, register his new employees. But if he isn't uh, registered in our database, um, he will, it won't work, so he has to find another way of uh, uh, getting through. Uh, there's also the possibility of uh, giving a mandate to one of its uh, accountants, for example, so he can uh, um, do the necessary formalities. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the way we distribute our uh, data. This is the main part of my uh, presentation. Um, this is uh, an example of, this is the situation of uh, our way of working uh, prior to uh, May 2014. Um, for the public, uh, we had only one thing, it's, uh, that was what we call public search. It's kind of a search engine and it had limited info. On the other side we had uh, what we call a license, so um, companies could buy uh, that license and they would get a kind of a copy of our uh, database so they could uh, reuse this uh, only for commercial reasons. And on the other hand we had the services we offer uh, to other government agencies so they could uh, perform their uh, legal uh, tasks. We had different ways of uh, giving them that information via web interface, web services, extracts, and something that we call KBO Select. It's kind of a um, tool for government agencies or, for example, uh, local uh, um, a municipality wanting to know uh, the new, every new company that has in installed itself in his uh, municipality. It could run uh, his own searches uh, based on uh, the tool. So uh, what changed after uh, May 2014? Uh, we got new legislation. Um, we got new legislation allowing us to do more, to be more open, to be more transparent, and to give uh, people more possibilities to uh, have access to our data. Um, one thing we did was upgrade the existing uh, possibilities, public search and the license, and the other thing is we got new ways of distributing our data. Uh, one of them is uh, the web services, and the other thing is uh, actual, the actual open data file. Okay, um, so what's public search? Like I told before, um, it's kind of a search engine, and who's the target group? Uh, it's actually the general public, everybody. Um, it's uh, a basic search engine, it's free of charge, and uh, it's a really good way to uh, quickly find information about a company. Um, what did we improve? Uh, we got more info on it. Uh, for example, legal functions, they weren't public uh, before, now they are. Also, the same thing uh, goes for the legal situation. And we have added new select, uh, selection criteria, now it's also uh, possible to uh, search by activity or by address. And we also added, added inactive uh, companies, enterprises, and uh, establishment units. Um, it's available in four languages, uh, German, French, Dutch, and English. So um, I think that covers a large part of the big uh, languages in, in Europe. So uh, no more reason to not use it. Uh, for those who don't speak Dutch or French. Um, and it's also daily updated. 
Um, so here you see a, a print screen of how the starting screen of your of the public search uh, looks like. Uh, on the top you have the different ways of uh, searching. Um, it's uh, really simple. Um, for example, this is what you get when you type in a name, uh, use Siemens, uh, type in a name and then you get a list of every company uh, that has a name uh, that is similar. You can also have a, an exact search um, if you want to. You get a list and everything you can see in red, uh, you can click on it. So if you click through, you can get more information about uh, a company. Um, as you can see, we added legal situation and the functions. It's not, quite, it's not clearly visible here, but um, you can click on it and then you get the names of the people. You can click on the link towards the <coughs> establishment units. Uh, there's also further down, there's the link towards the annual accounts and the official gazette. Um, so if you have a question about a Belgian company, um, use the link uh, that there's in uh, the last page you have, I have met, uh, I put the link in, so you can have a look yourself. It's, uh, I think it's uh, interesting if you uh, go and take a look. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is our license. Uh, the target group are mainly information brokers, uh, bigger companies who uh, try to offer uh, products to their clients about uh, the financial status of uh, other companies that they want to get involved with. Um, it's kind of a full copy of our database and uh, they can reuse it. Um, it's not really cheap, um, at least for smaller companies. For big companies, I don't think that's a problem. Um, it's an annual fee they have to pay uh, and they have access for a whole year. Um, what did we improve? We added more uh, information, historical data, for example and also uh, the non-commercial companies. Uh, before 2014, we only had commercial companies uh, and the uh, license. Um, and al now also, uh, we allow non-commercial reuse. This means that, for example, uh, also universities or uh, non-governmental organizations can uh, buy our license and uh, reuse that information. Um, it's a full copy. Uh, it's uh, put at a disposal on an FTP server and they can uh, download it uh, and every day they have an update. So what's new? Um, public search web services. Uh, we hope to target companies, uh, enterprises. Uh, it's a SOAP XML web service that allows um, companies to integrate um, our data into their own uh, databases or applications. Um, the content is mainly um, the things that you can see online, free, uh, the public search information. Um, it's not free. Uh, we charge like 50 euros for 2,000 requests. It's not, one request is not the information about a company, but a specific part of information, for uh, one piece of data. And you have to register uh, via web application, but that's kind of uh, easy. It's not uh, really complicated. Then, uh, open data. Uh, we're very proud that we finally uh, got this up and running. Um, the target of uh, allowing open data is to have companies, enterprises, app developers uh, reusing uh, the information to build their own uh, products uh, and uh, applications. Um, it's kind of a two set of CSV files uh, one is a full copy, full under, under uh, yeah, not, not exactly full copy, but it's, uh, close to it, and uh, also an update file. Um, it's free of charge. The only thing you have to do is uh, register, uh, register yourself, um, and it's mandatory. Uh, but again, this is really uh, easy. It's not uh, really complicated. Um, why do we ask for a registration? Because we want to know who are those people that uh, download our uh, open data file and what would they like to do with it. Um, it also gives us the opportunity to uh, contact them or inform them if we're going to uh, change something or if there's a problem with the files or so, we can contact them. Um, and it's only updated once a month. So you might, might ask, why did you go for open data? Uh, one of the reasons was uh, it was a political statement. Uh, our government wanted to be more transparent and uh, to start uh, with giving away open data. 
um, without political support, um, it would not, would not be possible to uh, start with open data in Belgium. Um, the other reason is we want to uh, get economic value out of our data. Um, so people can uh, develop goods, products, uh, apps, and generate uh, economic revival. Um, another thing, important thing is our data quality. Uh, it's like T Tim Moss said, if more people see your information, they will easily find mistakes or things that not, are not, wrong, uh, not, not correct, and they will inform you, and this gives us an opportunity to uh, improve our data quality. Um, it wasn't an easy road, because uh, the political statement uh, dates from 2009, so it took us about five years to actually get it up and running. Um, legal work took quite a long time, it took four years to get everything uh, in order. Uh, you also need people uh, that are, want, can do the technical development. Uh, you have to change the way you, your organization is uh, working. You have to change people. Uh, the task has to be redivided. Um, and you also need communication and public relations. If you don't tell anybody about you uh, giving away open data, they won't know, they won't use it, they won't uh, uh, create something of it. So I'm just quickly uh, about the content. Uh, I said it was a full copy. It's not correct. Um, it's only active companies uh, with their basic identification information, also uh, the establishment units, uh, and the most important pieces of information that we think is uh, important for people who want to reuse it. So the name, registered seats, activities, and such. Um, there's a difference between the open data thing and our license because um, we are mainly government funded but um, the things, the money we make of with reselling our uh, license or our web services we can use for our own development. So we don't, we're not, how more money we get the more we are able to make our own decisions and uh, use that money for our own development and development developing our database. Um, the difference is mainly the frequency, because open data is only once a month, uh, the license is a daily update. Um, historical information is not included in the open data file, uh, it is in the license, and some other pieces of information are available in, in our license and not in uh, um, the open data file. Um, that's the main difference. Um, something we did was uh, we lowered the fee of our uh, license because of the open data file because we said okay uh, it might be time to lower our, the fee so uh, the people understand that, uh, that the, the companies buying our information know that okay uh, they've done open data we might lose customers but on the other hand uh, they lower the fee so uh, it's also good for them. Uh, a quick look at the results up to now. Uh, public search, we have about uh, 190,000 queries a day. Um, for our uh, open data file, we have 1,400 uh, people ha who are registered and using our uh, file. Um, web services, only 200. We're a little bit disappointed about that, but we hope that uh, this changes in the future. And uh, our license, we have actually seven customers at this point. We added two, uh, or two actually, yeah, since uh, 2014. So what was the idea behind open data? What would, did we hope that we could get uh, out of it? Is that uh, application to application, um, things would happen so that people would integrate uh, what we offer in their own applications. Uh, also linked data, uh, linking uh, our information with public or private uh, databases. People uh, build, uh, using our information to build mobile apps. So for example, uh, an app that says, uh, okay, I need to go to the nearest hospital. 
uh, where is it located. Um, I could use it as an economical dashboard uh, and also for data cleaning. So concluding remarks, I would like to say that our idea is that the more open you are, the more transparent you are, it's, it's better for, for everybody. Um, it gives uh, people the opportunity to be creative, to be innovative. And we hope that uh, more countries in the future will follow our example and also be uh, open. Okay. Thank you for your attention.